when I think about emotional intelligence in contrast to what we call general intelligence or maybe cognitive intelligence, I think it's the best understood as what's under the surface, really. Um, I mean, all intelligence is what it takes to navigate our world, you know, what we need to do to think and act and feel effective in the world. And our cognitive intelligence, which we're all familiar with, with the IQ, is an, it's a, a way of processing data, processing information. It's the way we make decisions and think things through. It's, ra it's the rational part of us, hopefully, in most cases. And whereas the emotional intelligence is really sort of the underpinning that is less in our control, it's always in action. It's always um, in motion. It's always happening. We may or may not be as aware of it. And unfortunately or fortunately, depending upon how you think about it, it's almost always running the show. You know, your emotions may not be as visible to you, but they're almost always visible to others in your nonverbals and then often your tone. You know, I recently had someone who said to me on an email, all caps, I never shout. You know, that's a perfect example, right? I mean, he was shouting in his email. So the emotions were right there. But cognitive intelligence would say that he was thinking that he's not shouting. So emotions are running the show a lot of the time. And emotional intelligence is becoming aware of that fact, working with it. I mean, research has shown that emotional intelligence is really a core attribute of effectiveness in leadership. And it's not um, pie in the sky anymore. I mean, there's really been a lot of good scientific research done on what makes for an effective leader. And yes, you need to be intellectually robust. You need to know your subject. You need to be have a, a certain level of expertise in whatever functional area you've come up through um, in your career. But over and over again, the research has shown that you're the quality and level of your emotional intelligence will often dictate your success as a leader. And that is directly connected to the fact that, as I said earlier, emotional intelligence is often running in the background and running in the foreground, regardless of whether or not you're solving the world's problems with your expertise. So it's really core to how you influence, how you connect, how you bring followers, with you if you have a vision. If you think of all the things that make a leader successful, creating a vision for the future, collaborating with people, building a team, moving the ball forward in particular, whatever initiative we're trying to accomplish, you know, changing the world. All of those things are ideas, but they're driven by motivation, by emotions. And so emotional intelligence is core to your success on all levels. Adaptive leadership is taking emotional intelligence and cognitive intelligence or just general intelligence and developing facileness, developing an ability to be um, not habituated. You know, if you think of agility and you think of adaptability, what do those words really mean? They mean that people are responsive to the world. Leadership is always, is never in a vacuum. You never lead without context. And in fact, some of the best research that's being done on leadership these days is all about how much context impacts you as a leader and your followers. So adaptive leadership or agile leadership is about how you respond to the situation. And developing agility is developing a, t a set of tools, you know, a portfolio of skills or a toolkit or um, a set of capabilities that comes to support you no matter what's happening. And it's very different from being reactive to a situation, which is, in fact, I think exactly the opposite, which many of us are guilty of. We react to the context out of habits, past situations, you know, whatever we developed over the years. But adaptive and agile leaders learn to respond thoughtfully, reflectively, and appropriately to sort of whatever the context puts them in. 
four areas for developing agility. I, you know, it's hard to just focus on four areas, but I do think that there are sort of fundamental themes that are particularly useful for leaders to focus, for, to get to attach to or to spend energy on, I guess I would say. And I call them the four F's, just to make it see, simple, so that it's, 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 they're complex subjects, but to get them into a place where they're useful and accessible, and we can remember them. So the four F's are flexibility, you know, you're, to be able to flow with the punches, deal with the context, bounce back, reboundability is another way of looking at it, but being flexible. And not just dealing with the situations like context, but also flexible in your style. As leaders develop and grow and become more effective, they want to be able to use a variety of styles, not just have one I am the boss kind of style or I am the consensus kind of style. You need a variety of styles depending upon. So developing that flexibility. Secondly is focus. In our world today, it's all about multitasking, right? Everybody does their screens and their texts and their uh, PowerPoints and their present, everything all at once. Science has, research has been done that shows that in reality, the human brain doesn't multitask. It can switch tasks incredibly quickly. So you can appear to be doing multitasking because you can do a task and drive your car at the same time. Bad idea. But the reality is that the more effective you are as a leader, the more aware you are of the need to focus on one thing at a time. And that doesn't mean, you know, it's for a long time. But sort of discard this idea of I'm going to do three things at once and just really pay attention to the one thing that needs to be accomplished at that moment. And that's going to lead to greater effectiveness and greater agility. Thirdly, I think about... Um, I mean, you need to have uh, a recognition, as I said earlier about emotional intelligence, that feelings are always in the mix. And it's honoring that feelings are in the context, are in the relationship, in the decision making, whether you like it or not. And the more you honor that and are willing to at least bring that to the table, bring it to the surface, whether it's your feelings or honor somebody else's feelings, Again, it doesn't spend, it doesn't have to be time consuming, but it has to be present to recognize the value and importance of feelings. And the fourth, which just popped into my head, is feedback. You know, biologically, we are feedback loops. The human body stays healthy by having a constant cycle of feedback, naturally. And so the same thing is true. It's a great metaphor. We are physically a great metaphor for effective leadership, which is you need to hear from the world. How are you doing? And that means you need to be willing and courageous to take the straight scoop from the people you respect, value their feedback, your colleagues, your subordinates, your superiors, your spouse, your friends. I mean, there's a whole surfeit of folks around you, most of whom probably have your best interests in mind. So to have that courage to say, you know, I really want to know well, how I'm perceived. So feedback is really, and that's also how we grow. We develop our growing edge by knowing where there may be a misalignment between how we perceive ourselves and how we're perceived by others. And to not view that as something to be self-critical or judge, but more as an opportunity. Because in most cases, I would say 99 out of 100 cases, people really want you to succeed. And as a leader, you want your people to succeed. So feedback is really crucial. Uh, well, feedback in terms of, uh, is a key component of developing a strategy for becoming adapt adaptive. I think inserting feedback loops into your life and then another area that I think is really valuable as a development tool for leaders to become more agile and more flexible is to become aware of your strengths and look to expand them. Look to, you know, this idea that we have to focus on what we do are our weaknesses or um, is kind of a leftover from a history of psychology around neurosis and pathology and that. And it, it's not that it's not useful in some situations, but research has shown that what really works 
is not to try to fix what's wrong or to see yourself as not good enough or broken, but to really honor what you do well. And there are surveys and assessments you can do and feedback will help you learn what you do really well. What are your top five strengths? And then see that as an, as an expansion opportunity. Oh, I could do even more. So know your strengths, be willing to take feedback. And then, you know, this will sound sort of maybe run of the mill, but I think it's really crucial, which is be willing to practice something new. Agile leadership is about practicing new behaviors, trying, take a little bit of a risk. If you've never done it before, that's the great place to start.